of Greg Troy and Terry McKeever, the head men and women's Olympic coaches for the U.S. Olympic swim team. Um, in addition to their Olympic coaching duties, they're also, um, Greg is the head coach of University of Florida as well as the Gator Swim Club, um, Gator Swimming, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Terry McKeever is the head coach of the women's team at Cal Berkeley um, and Cal Swimming as well. So um, we're going to and go ahead and get started here. Um, I'm going to open the floor with a question, and you guys know the drill. So um, Greg and Terry, if you guys can both just comment on just, I guess, the outlook going into trials, kind of what your guys' role here specifically will be from the Olympic team head coach standpoint. Well, yeah. We hope to select maybe the best men's team ever. And uh, our, our, our role's actually kind of simple from now, from uh, the time we leave here to the Olympics. It's just, we're just kind of the caretakers of other folks' athletes. We want to make sure we put them in the most comfortable situation that, that they can do well and feel as closely as they can to what they would be doing at home. And uh, hopefully put them in some dynamic that we can improve upon the performances here and be even better in London. Yeah, I, I would echo uh, a lot of um, what, what our, our role is now is to, I mean, what I'm excited about is we're, we're finally going to actually have, um, you know, get the selection and have a team that we know um, what the men look like, what the women look like. And, and I think on the women's side that there's just, tremendous competition in a, a lot of different events, veterans versus, um, um, you know, very young people, people that have missed before. And I'm just a firm believer that that competition brings out the, the best in the people that you would want representing the U.S. at the Olympics. So, um, you, you know, right, right now it's, it's the excitement and anticipation of, of the team developing. And, and then, like Greg said, um, as we move toward London, just making sure that we're facilitating and creating an environment where people are comfortable and can improve and and um, feel supported so that they can be even better in um, how many days is it 35 days or whatever it is <laughs> okay please raise your hand if you have questions Bonnie has the mic over there who wants to go first come on guys okay we'll start with John and then go back to Angela John Powers, Boston Globe, for Greg, if you'll excuse a regional question. Um, could you talk about Elizabeth Beisel, the progress you've seen her make since 08, uh, and also uh, what changes have happened to her in terms of pressure and or confidence since she won the world title? Well, she, she comes from a great, great club background in, in Massachusetts. She swam for Chuck Batchelor, and so she came in with real good tools. Um, in 08, she was a little high school girl that I don't think she realized what happened to her. Um, since then, she's developed a little bit, um, been a finalist at the NC2As, that competition level has, has, has helped her immensely. Uh, last summer's success at the, the World Championships, is she's a lot more confident athlete than what she was. She was, she was a nervous wreck at every big meet prior to that, and she's uh, getting a little better handle on those things. She certainly has, um, she's trained extremely well. Uh, done a tremendous job of, of getting fit and doing some extra things on her own. Just, just a much more mature athlete than what she was four years ago. Go with Angela in the back there. Hi, Angela Cox here from Australia's Seven Network, and forgive me for asking another regional question. I'm curious about your thoughts about the Australian swim team. Obviously, a few games ago we had Thorpe, we had Hackett, these big names who did really well. How would you compare the team that Australia's got now with previous games? Are they as competitive, do you think? Do you think they pose as big a threat as in previous years? Looking at them from afar, I, I think that um, they might be a little more complete team than what they were before, because they were so one or two people dominant before. Um, Got a pretty good mixture of some young guys, um, swim a lot of different things, and seem to be a little more rounded. So you got a, a good mixture of some, um, some experience with some young people. Uh, I realize with you, I don't, we don't study it quite as much. I'm kind of uh, trying to kick care of our deal right now. And, uh, but I, I think it's a formidable situation. I, I believe it's every bit as good as a team four years ago. Uncle Karen and then no, Brett. Karen Krauss, New York Times. This is a question for each of you. You both produce superlative multi-event athletes with very different training regimens or approaches. Is there a common thread that maybe isn't obvious that it would explain that? Or how do you explain how um, you 
guys have both been successful coming from at the sport from different places. I'll let you go. <laughs> Uh, I've told Greg this, but one of, one of um, uh, I, I, I think that on the outside there there <coughs> probably is a perception that Greg and I look at the sport um, differently, and, and, and I think in some ways we do. But I think in the way that that we hold our athletes accountable and um, have both set up programs that we have a strong belief in that um, uh, that many. Uh, Greg much more than I, but but many people have found success in. I, I think that, um, and I think what the constant it is in that is um, educating young people to um, be self-accountable, to recognize that they they have the tools, and and our job is creating an environment where success is possible, but we can't do it for them. And uh, I think an athlete that. Um, respects an honest conversation, is honest with themselves, and will mature and make the decisions are, is, um, for me, what is, is most fulfilling in, um, and, and that those rules apply no matter who, who you are, you know, whether you're Natalie or Sally Smith on, on my team, that there are certain expectations that, um, that that's, that's the way we're going to do things. So. Uh, that, that's a pretty good observation. And Terry and I have talked a lot. We, we exchanged some ideas. Um, been fortunate to travel together a few times. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. As I always tell our athletes it's like making chocolate chip cookies. There's all kinds of different recipes. You just got to figure out which one works for you. But I think the one constant, no matter what recipe it is, you know, you, you, you got to follow the recipe. Um, our basic ingredients are the same, but I think both of us are pretty honest with the athletes. I uh, talk with Terry a little bit sometimes. We, you know, almost uh, blatantly honest with them, but that makes them function well because it's pretty honest when you get in the box. It's you and performance, and that's what it comes down to. I'm going to go the question right over here, and then we'll do Paul and Joanne. Hi, Shereen Williams with the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Terry, I wanted to ask you about Dana Vollmer. Obviously, 2008 was so disappointing for her, and I know you had just started working with her at that point. But how different is she now, four years later than 2008, and how much does that experience drive her? You think in this one? Um, I think the the first thing you said about you know how disappointing not to make it, and and one of the things I I know I said at the time, and I've said to Dana, you know, if the worst thing that happens to you is you didn't make the Olympic team in the 2008, that's a pretty darn good life, you, you know, so let's kind of keep this in perspective. And, um, you know, I think she definitely did struggle for a year and, and um, I just really challenged her to figure out why you're doing it and, um, you, you know, that get clear on why you want to do this and are you willing to keep doing it and what will... Um, uh, what are the changes that you're going to need to make if you want to continue to improve? And I think it's similar to what Greg said about Elizabeth is like no matter how old you are, I'm, you know, I'm more mature now than I was in 2008 as well. You know, and and I, I think it's just maturing and a perspective and, you know, she's married now and, and life is, is fuller. And I think it keeps it in, in perspective and, and that has really helped her find sort of be comfortable in her, more comfortable in her own skin, I think, and, and to know she can deal with whatever is going to happen. So. We'll go with Paul over here, Bonnie. Hi, Terry. Paul Newberry from Associated Press. Uh, how do you think, you know, so much on the, obviously, the phelps Lochte rivalry, uh, but uh, Natalie and uh, Missy is pretty enticing as well and be going head-to-head -head and some both big good events for both of them. How do you think Natalie uh, is going to handle that? And just what's your thoughts on, on those two going at each other? Well, I, I, I don't, um, you know, I don't, I don't think Natalie looks at it as like going head to head with Missy or with anybody. I, I think the way that Natalie's looked at her career is she's going head to head with Natalie. And, and um, you know, that's, that's what the challenge is in the next eight days is is for her to to be her best and and work on where she is now compared to where she was in 08 or 04 and and again just that that process and that journey and and we 
we have she and and I have no no absolutely no control over what Missy or anybody else does so I, I, I don't think she spends too much time thinking about that I, I, I think um, other other people spend a lot more time on that than she does <laughs> okay I'm gonna go with Joanne Joanne Barnes, Detroit Free Press. Greg, these will be Michael Phelps' fourth and last Olympic trials. Can you reflect on his, his career? Well, I'm glad he's doing one more Olympic trials. We, we need him. He's, uh, he's obviously the best. Um, I think when you look at Michael, the, the, the thing that's missed sometimes is his tremendous race instincts. He is one of the absolute best at preparing for, for a challenge. Um, it, it extends in uh, every event he swims, and, and very seldom you never see him swim an event that uh, that isn't all full bore. His versatility is amazing. If, if the program were different, he probably could go three or four different ways in what events he swims. Um, and his important importance to the to the sport is gigantic because we, um, you know, 10, 12 years ago we wouldn't have had this many uh, reporters at a swimming press conference. I think that's a direct result and tribute to Michael and how he's handled things. We're going to go with Pat and then Dan. Hey, Terry. Uh, Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. Just wondering in your years working with Natalie how you have seen her change and how she is the same. Um, I, I think how I've seen her change is just... Uh, a little bit uh, a broken little girl walk onto the deck in 2000 and um, there's a there's a young woman that is um, is very confident and very uh, interested in so many different things just like the depth the uh, what's the right word I want to say the is it when people get more more to them you, you know like like I think when you're when any of us are 18 you know you're you're 18 and then as as you're a 30 year old you got more there's more to you there's you know there's their swimming piece there's the food piece there's the how are the chickens doing there's the um, there's the professional piece now there's the wife piece there's the friend piece and um, she's it's just it's been fun to I was talking to my assistant yesterday I mean in a lot of ways we've grown up together and in, in in the sport and and that's that that's been I, I have a hard time sometimes even remembering the the one that I first met you know because you, you see the one you have now and and I think in the ways that she's the same is that she's very um, uh, determined and and focused and purposeful in in what she wants to do you know she she um, listens to Natalie and is going to uh, do the things that bring Natalie joy and, um, and, and I really have always admired and, and respected that. I, I, I think that she's, she's um, just stayed true to what has been important to her. So. With Dan? This is a question for uh, Dan Albano, Orange County Register. This is a question for both of you. We have Missy Franklin here, just an uh, amazing, uh, just graduated her junior year, incredible recruit. Um, what's it like to, you know, when you, to, for you guys to watch her, um, and what kind of talent do you see in her? Is there, is there anybody to compare her to um, coming down the, the pike? Some people have co compared her to maybe she's the biggest recruit for college swimming for, since Natalie Coughlin. And uh, how hard is it not to try to recruit her right now during trials? She said that most coaches are going to, lay off her right now for the recruiting process and let her focus on the trials? Well, I, I guess I'll start since she's a female. <laughs> um, but, I, I mean, I, I think that um, that as, as you work with the national team and, and the assistants that ultimately will be with us, that we're very clear on that our I, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I'm the coach at the University of California, Berkeley, but that on, on July 3rd, that there shouldn't be anything to do with that. I'm the coach of the uh, U.S. Olympic team, and, and that is a higher calling. And, and um, that, uh, you know, whoever ends up on, on, on the team, there, there's a time and a place to take care of um, what her future might look like or any other uh, uh, 
you know, it's a very odd dynamic. July 1st is the first time we can talk to recruits and, and, and personally, I've just made a decision as our program and what my responsibilities are. I, I'm not going to do any recruiting until August 5th when, uh, you know, it doesn't mean I'm not going to send an email or things like that, but I mean, I'm not interested in, in, um, in doing that. For me to be my best, I need to be focused on what an honor this is and what a responsibility this is. And um, I, and, and I'm sure Greg, will do everything we can to help Missy and everybody else be, um, be prepared in, um, in, in, in an environment where they're, their focus is on what's what's important. There, there's time for down the road, um, you know, whether it be taking a break or am I going to retire or where am I going to go to college? I mean, all, everybody's this it, in 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 a couple weeks is going to have you know a lot of lot of there's a lot of athletes here that this is their their you know not only where do I go to college but you know where do I get a job? Do I want to keep swimming? Do it? So it, it's kind of a um, I'll just speak for for me, but I mean, I've got people all over on the the group that I'm working with. On they're they're in different parts of their lives, and it's um, it is a part of what we're um, do as coaches. But as as far as someone that you don't work with on a daily basis, I I, I think it's it's just to um, focus on Missy Franklin, hopefully the Olympian, and and how to make her first Olympic experience. Um, uh, successful and and if we do this right, that Missy's going to be a figure like a Ryan or a um, or Natalie or a Michael and and that's what I'd like to focus on for for Missy. Not so much right now, but how do we have a talent like that, like like Greg was saying about Michael? You know, this force. How do we? I think Missy is the potential of having her be on um, multiple Olympic teams and help the U.S for not, not just the next month, but hopefully, you know, the next generation of, of great swimmers, so. I was kind of hoping Terry was going to take off till December in recruiting so I could catch <laughs> up a little bit. But, uh, we're, we're in the same dynamic. We, uh, matter of fact, uh, one of my assistant coaches stopped me a few days ago and reminded me that she was, in fact, going to be a senior. I thought she was going to be a junior, so I'm way behind the scale. But she, she's, uh, she's got a tremendous future. Great, bright young star. I, I, I think it's um, uh, very cognizant that, that she is a young lady and she's got a long way to go. I, um, I think sometimes we put too much pressure on some of those people too young to be something other than what they are. Her versatility is amazing, the number of events she can swim. Um, and she has the same characteristics that you see from, uh, from Ryan, Michael, Natalie. Um, she's a great racer. She's in a close race. She knows how to get her hand in the wall, and th those are real, real hard things to teach. So, but um, from a recruiting standpoint, I, we've kind of put everything on hold right now. Um, it's way too important year for these folks uh, to worry about what they're doing next fall. What they need to be doing is getting ready for this summer. We have one question up here. Dirk Chatwin with the Omaha World Herald. Four years ago, it seemed like every other question at these press conferences was about the swimsuits. Uh, assess where the suits are now and looking back, if they were too fast four years ago, please. Uh, I think the suits, where they are right now, is where they should stay. Um, we're back to a little more truer sport. Uh, it's, you know, we're here talking about athletes. We're talking about the equipment that they wear. Uh, I think it's it leveled it's leveled the playing field to the standpoint that now if you're someone that's willing to make a commitment to work real hard, um, the equipment isn't going to equalize things for everyone. It, it it comes back to natural abilities. It's um, it's put a premium on performance again. Um, there aren't as many world records, but the ones that are been, have been broken are premier now. They really mean something. So I, I, overall, I think it's really a good thing for the sport. Yeah, I I would. I would echo that, that it just from a coaching perspective, it was frustrating to, um, I, I think it took away some of the joy of coaching too, you know, you know that, that, that if, um, and, and rewarding good coaching, not only good performance and hard work, but good, good, good coaching by putting, you know, putting, yeah, it took 45 minutes to get it on, but that's a lot easier than four and a half months of doing something, you know, and in some ways I, I think that that's kind of what was going on and, and, and the idea that different people, depending on, you know, your body type or whatever, were getting different kind of bumps. It was just kind of, it was, it was 
not it, not enjoyable, you know. And and I I hope that we can get to where we just like Greg says, we can just talk about like the the people that are are putting in the work and are doing are technically sound and are emotionally and mentally sound, and that those are the ones that are are achieving the highest um, level in our sport, not the one that gets lucky enough that their body or their, they got the right suit on that day or it didn't rip or whatever, you know, it just was a lot of energy in places that um, I, unfortunately we shouldn't be spending energy on, you know. There, there is an aspect to those suits though that was really helpful, I think from a coaching perspective. It kind of removes some glass ceilings for athletes um, is what expectation was. I think that's one reason why uh, there may be more people that made the standards for the meet. Um, it, it showed you that there were capabilities that you could go out faster in events maybe than what you could prior. Um, but in order to do that, you had to supplement your training, uh, increase what you were doing training-wise to hold it. So I, I think it in, enhanced the athletes' abilities of what they can do. We'll do one more question. Or we won't. So thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time, and thank you, Greg and Terry. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, guys, we're going to get started.